All right, how many times has this happened to you before? So you're wanting to change some system configuration file, let's say in slash Etsy slash hosts, you open this up and you wanna make a change only to find out that you're changing a read only file. Vim warns you, you can't do anything about it. Try to save it and of course you can't. So what you might be thinking of is sudo and it's a very intuitive solution. It makes sense whenever you're blocked from doing something and you want to do it, you just add in sudo and it magically does it. So you run sudo vim slash etsy slash hosts and that should solve the problem, right? As you can see, you can now go in here and save whatever you want. And that works exactly as you would expect. But there are a couple of things wrong when using sudo vim and that's why I don't recommend that you should ever use this command. Because first of all, let's talk about the aesthetics. As you can see, we're not exactly in the same Vim as we were before. What happened to our beautiful theme? So any plugins or any theming or configuration that you did, maybe in your Vim RC. So for example, I have this giant configuration file in my NVim file right here with a whole bunch of plugins and things to make it nicer. And if you are in sudo Vim, then you're not gonna get any of this config whenever you're editing these files. So that might be a little bit of a nuisance. And whenever you run sudo, it's actually looking for a configuration file in your root directory, not your home directory. So that's why you're not seeing the configuration here. And you might be thinking, okay, I'll just copy and paste my configuration file from my home directory to my root directory as well. But that runs into another problem in that if you run sudo vim, you're giving full root permissions to your editor. So that includes all of these plugins in here. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of plugins from some random GitHub repositories. And whenever you're running sudo vim and you're importing all these plugins, you're actually giving all of these plugins root permissions to your system. Now that could be a little bit dangerous because I don't necessarily trust all of these plugins. Like I said, they're just from random GitHub repositories. So if there's a little bit of malicious code in one of these and I'm giving it sudo permissions, that is a recipe for disaster. Probably not what you want. So there is a way to circumvent all of these issues with running sudo vim, and that is by running a different command called sudo edit. So we can run sudo edit slash etsy slash hosts, and as you might be able to tell, we're now in our version of vim with all of our plugins. We're reading from the vimrc file, so we get all the nice syntax highlighting and other niceties that you would expect. But we're also not giving the editor root permissions. And you might be wondering how this works. If you look down at the bottom here, we're not actually editing the slash etsy slash hosts file directly. We've actually created a temporary file, and only once we've finished editing this file will it copy and replace the slash etsy slash hosts file. So since we're editing a fake version of this file, we're not going to do any damage to anything. So we can just go in here, change something, uh, close out of this, and the changes are only going to take effect once you close out the editor. That is maybe one small drawback, but let's say we quit this. And now slash etsy slash host should be changed. Cat this out and that change has been made. And you might be wondering about the temp file that was also created in slash var slash temp. And we can go in and check on that. And as you can see, the file has been deleted. So once the changes have been made and the temporary file has replaced the original file, then the temporary file will be deleted. So you're not going to have a bunch of system configuration files sitting in a temporary folder. That probably wouldn't be a good idea security wise. So as I've shown you, sudo edit kind of solves all of the problems at once. But let's say that you want to select a specific editor that you want sudo edit to use. Maybe you don't want it to use vim. I believe it's vim by default. And you can change that by setting your editor variable. So let's echo out what editor I'm using right now. It's currently set to nvim, neovim. And you can change that by going into your bash rc file, or if you're using zsh, it's gonna be in your zshn file. And I have a whole bunch of variables in here, and I'm exporting nvim. And by default, it will use your editor variable or your visual variable if you have that set. I don't, so it's just defaulting to my editor. You can also have a separate variable right here called sudo editor. And this is if you want to have a different editor for your sudo edit than your normal editing. So if you actually take a look at this, if I save this, and I have to source this, of course, and 
Then once I run sudo edit, it's actually opening up in nano, which might be what you want. You might wanna have a different editor for using sudo edit. So you can do that just by changing this variable, but I'm just going to hide that for now and keep using NeoVim. And finally, sudo edit is not the only thing that you can do. For some reason, some people just don't like using sudo edit. They would rather just do it from Vim directly. So there are a couple of tricks and hacks that you can do in order to get around the issue where it's not letting you edit a read-only file. So let's go back here into slash Etsy hosts again. And as you can see, it's saying that you're changing a read-only file, but you can still go through and change it. And a little weird trick that you can use in order to still save this, even though we're not under root permissions, is by running colon W to save it, and then using sudo T, and then a percent sign. So this is a weird little trick, but if you go through and hit OK, hit Enter, the changes will actually be made. So we can go out of here, cat this, and the file is now empty. And it's kind of a hassle to type out every single time, so you can just set a shortcut in your vimrc. Uh, I'll leave a link to this, which is something you can add to your vimrc. You can cmap uh, w exclamation point exclamation point to automatically run this little command right here. So that is another way you can do it. And there's also a plugin here called suda.vim, and this does the same thing in that it allows you to write to read-only files but you might prefer to do it this way, it might be easier, so I'll leave a link to this as well. But that's all there is to it, so you're not going to catch me in any more videos typing in sudo vim like a noob. This is a little trick with sudo edit that more people should know about. I might be one of the last people to have heard about this, and hopefully this can save you from all the issues that you can run into with using vim and sudo vim. There you go, all your problems are solved with sudo edit. Now you can go out and modify system files the right way.